हाय मेरा नाम गीतिका देवनाथ है एंड दिस इज वी आर गोइंग टू डू योर लास्ट चैप्टर ऑफ योर विस्ता विच इज मेमरीज ऑफ चाइल्डहुड ओके इट्स अ ट्वेल्थ क्लास चैप्टर एंड इट्स योर लास्ट चैप्टर सो फॉर दिस चैप्टर मेमरीज ऑफ चाइल्डहुड हैज टू एनिकडोटल स्टोरीज एंड दी स्टोरीज आर बेसिकली ड्रिवन फ्रॉम द ऑथर्स चाइल्डहुड एंड द मेमरीज दे हैव गॉन थ्रू एंड दी स्टोरीज आर वेरी क्रिटिकल वेरी नैरेटिव ऑफ डिस्क्रिमिनेशन नैरेटिव ऑफ ऑपरेशन नैरेटिव ऑफ ईवल्स ऑफ ऑपरेशन क्लास एंड कास्ट डिवाइड सो दिस चैप्टर बेसिकली इज अ वेरी क्रिटिकल एंड टोटल चैप्टर वेरी ऑटोबायोग्राफिकल सो do mention all of these things when you attempt these answers and uh, then so they ha- it has two uh, two narratives of two authors so first is zitkala sa her chapter her autobiographical story which is cutting of my long hair uh, it is the first one and so we'll divide the chapter in two sections first day we'll do this chap uh, this part and then we'll go to bama's part which is the next um section so in this episode where the author zitkala sa she is a native american writer and she is talking about the hegemony the cultural hegemony which was created by the colonizers how they have forced one cultural identity over the other culture other marginalized people and they are forced to follow the culture of some uh, somebody else someone uh, a colonized section uh, colonized section is forced to follow the culture of the colonizers like like in our like uh, uh, when we were up in colonized area when india was colonized by britishers so many cultural identities were been uh, rapidly changed or cultural identity been forced on indians because they had to follow certain sort of uh, their rules their culture they have to get acquainted to their culture so all of this ki happened uh, isme ek point pe ek uh, account hai jahan pe ki jo ameer hai jin logon ne आपके ऊपर रूल कर रहे हैं जैसे ब्रिटिश हमारे ऊपर रूल कर रहे थे वैसे ही नेटिव अमेरिकन उस टाइम अमेरिकन के जितने लोग थे अमेरिका के जो नेटिव अमेरिकन द पीपल फ्रॉम द रेड इंडियंस द पीपल फ्रॉम वेरी सबर्ब्स एंड दे वर बीइंग रूल्ड बाय द ब्रिटिशर्स अगेन सो इट इज तो उनके ऊपर जो कल्चरल हेजमिन क्रिएट कर रहे थे Uh, उसके बारे में ऑथर लिख रही है और अपने ही चाइल्डहुड से लिख रही है वो अपने ही चाइल्डहुड के एक मेमोरी से लिख रही है जो इतनी ज़्यादा पावरफुल थे उनके लाइफ में जो इतनी ज़्यादा टॉर्चरस थे उनके हिसाब से दैट शी हैड टू पैन इट डाउन इन द एज अ चैप्टर एज अ स्टोरी फॉर आस टू रीड एंड देन टू रियलाइज द दिस ऑपरेशन दैट हैज़ हैपन इन द in the entire course of time of her living uh, in that in the boarding school that was run by christian uh, and the christian nuns and the britishers specifically specifically british christian nuns then and they were forced to follow certain rules which was very um, humiliating for the author which was very uh, which was also a part of her loss of cultural identity uh, it was imposing their culture over the native american uh, uh, out over the marginalized community which will be your native american people at that time or red indians whosoever so that keep on kept on happening and this sort of hegemony also creates a lot of trauma for people also create a lot of uh, discrimination and oppression over the people and so forth in the next section we will also look up how bama faces the same caste and class oppression here we see the caste oppression here we basically see the uh, class oppression in zitkala sa as well as how the cultural uh, imposition of one community one colon uh, community which is superior to them Um, the colonizers who are basically ruling over the marginalized section and uh, they are trying to impose their cultural identity over the people so it has i mean you see it happening in our country also i mean various section where certain section of people are forced 
to follow a certain sort of custom which ma they might not abide by which might not be um, might not be you know relevant for their own culture but they are forced to follow the culture and the uh, you know uh, the sort of rituals or sort of practices of the of a different uh, superior community in t in courts superior here is the people who are probably in majority or probably who are ruling who are more powerful section and they are forcing certain section which is marginalized which is minuscule to uh, sort of change their cultural identity into their own okay so it's also a form of oppression in a very uh, larger manner and also discrimination because eventually if there is this hierarchy of superior and inferior in the society then obviously there is a form of discrimination will be created in terms of opportunity in terms of how we live in terms of various other things so even in terms of your own identity being lost so that sort of a account is been given by both the authors here one is where the person is talking about caste oppression which ha which we see is happening in the country largely in india because there is highest number of caste divide so which keeps on happening in the country on the name of caste people are being killed people are been oppressed from years and years from like centuries which has been done so for that sort of a caste divide which has been created in the country and with that sort of section the two authors are writing here with their own account of their memories from the childhood so first we begin with uh, zitkala's section where she is giving her autobiographical narrative of her memory from when she was in class 3rd and when she went uh, she is uh, her mother has sent her to a boarding school which is carla boarding school see the carla spelling here is this but uh, this is a french word you will pronounce it as carla it is not how it is written so usually french words are pronou uh, have a different sort of consonant sound so it's carla indian school and where she gives her account that how when she comes and she feels very humiliated and indignified the way the people behave uh, way the authorities behave per se with the child and how the culture of one section is being imposed on the other section and this is we are talking about a child here so child might not have that sort of an uh, identity is that sort of ha uh, that sort of understanding of what the culture of other person is what the culture of different community is so to discipline that child on the name of disciplining that child it does not anywhere means that the child will be oppressed because the person is a child the it's a very tender age where people where the child is suffering and going through all of these all of these oppression all of these evils and that is precisely can leave a mark on that child on the child's mind and which can be carried to the very long uh, for her life and that can uh, traumatize her over and over again so forth so this when she enters and she goes to the school firstly she is a young child she is leaving her home and she is now in a boarding school so we know the pattern of a boarding school so boarding schools are usually very stringent very strict on the rules and their customs now this boarding school is in your 19 uh, in your 19 uh, 1990 uh, 1900 that period of time so there was a high powerful rule of the britishers british colonizers also in the country so that time a school which is built and built and constructed which has authority of the british rule so that school will be obviously will be following entirely british cultures but rather to understand the children are coming from a very different the social cultural background the school authorities they try to impose such rules on those kids which uh, which were very stringent which were very indignified for those uh, for those students uh, they were very much oppressive as well as they were sort of uh, in a manner that that sort of discriminates or uh, leaves suppresses that identity of that child as well so when she comes to the school now she sees everybody is dressed in a very stiff immodest she calls it as immodest here 
she calls that immodest uh, clothing and very tight shoes so she is coming from a background where they uh, where there's a proper there's a different sense of clothing that they follow that that community follow from where zitkala is coming so now when she is young and she is coming to the school now there's a different set of uniform which is given which includes short skirts which has very tight stiff shoes very tight blouse and everything it's very tight and short so she feels very ashamed to wear all those things so and she's so ashamed that uh, she feels that why am i being and why am i being forced to wear this i don't want to wear this but it's very short she feels it's immodest because she has not been uh, wearing any of these things so she is told to wear such sort of clothes and when she wears it she she's feeling very shy because it's the first time she's wearing so uh, such short clothes and such tight fitting stuff so that she feels very shy because she has not been wearing any of these earlier in her life so she when she wears this then uh, while going towards the line while walking towards the line uh, when they are all going towards the dinner table that time they she is wearing a shawl over her shoulders to cover herself because she is very uh, she is uh, very shy about whatever she is wearing so and the authority is there basically here the authority that is uh, in court it's written that it's a gray haired woman uh, a pale gray haired woman uh, woman who is standing who is watching everybody she is like the headmistress you can call her the headmistress or the powerful person a teacher so she is the headmistress and she suddenly takes her shawl away she snatches the shawl from her shoulder and she snatches the shawl from her shoulder she feels very humiliated by that act she feels very very sad and very very humiliated by that act that why this sort of behavior has been done with her why uh, she did that because and to understand the mind frame of a child if you do that with a child uh, of probably class second uh, from kg to fifth that sort of a time um, and even after that even post that but those are like tender ages from like uh, from around 5 years when we enter the school when we are 5 years old we enter the school till 10 years till we are in class 5 so uh, during that time the child is very naive the child is very young to even understand these sort of differences of culture to understand because the child is not aware of all of it so suddenly certain this sort of act this sort of uh, thing is done to that child can impose a lot of trauma can uh, probably create a lot of uh, um, evil sort of you know uh, impression of different culture of a different person in that mind a very bad impression as well as that can be stuck into that mind for a very long time so forth so when this is done when this is done then that kala feels very shy and in the beginning of the chap- uh, chapter uh, beginning of her narrative that kala's narrative she begins with this is the uh, land of apples because there's so many um, where she goes to um, for her boarding classes then uh, when she says in the biting cold people are uh, the students are told to pe- pick up stones and uh do, uh do all those work in the ground and it is very cold so she feels even that is a form of oppression that why in such a cold students are young students like small kids are told to pick up stones and clean the ground and that sort of a thing that usually happens in terms of punishment in the school these days but that uh, after that that's how she begins and then this episode happens with her now while her uh, cloth her shawl is been snatched away from her shoulders then when in the line they are walking towards the dining table where they will have their meals that time there is a, a sort of formula there is a sort of a custom that the school authorities the boarding authorities uh, followed that there are there were different bells जैसे स्कूल में घंटे बजती है आपके ब्रेक के लिए या हर पीरियड खत्म होती है तब तो उसी तरीके से ती घंटियाँ बजती थी कि कब क्या होगा तो एक घंटी में आप आगे का अपना चेयर हटाओगे दूसरी घंटी में आप उस चेयर पे बैठोगे तीसरी घंटी में आप खाना शुरू करोगे सो so, ये सारे रूल्स थे और वेन दीज रूल्स व देर सो जिटकाला डिन नो अबाउट दीज रूल्स बिकॉज शी वॉज नॉट 
taught those rules she was uh, unaware of that of all those rules then what happens when uh, when she goes in the line with all her mates all her classmates and all the people so she also sees while going there she also sees that there are other uh, indian girls who are uh, made to dress in those immodest in coats uh, immodest wear that she says immodest today we might not find those clothes as immodest which is short clothes or probably short skirts or tight fitting clothes we might not uh, feel that they are immodest today but they are right uh, this has been written way back in 199 in your uh, 1900 in that beginning of this beginning of the century so that time it has been written and when that time it has been written then and uh, the author which she is coming is from a very native american area very suburbs uh, the marginalized section where the community follows their own section own a uh, section of how they are supposed to wear their own uh, that section follows their own cultural way of wearing clo uh, wearing stuff in terms of clothes in terms of your um, entire attire how they carry their eating habits and everything so she is not aware of that of uh, she is not aware how of the these rules in the uh, in the boarding school are uh, sort of formulated so and and if she is not aware then she doesn't know what to do so when she uh, gets uh, into the dining room she also sees her three uh, three boys from her own uh, native section she also sees them and she feels very um, she feels very out of the place what uh, what we say uh, very out of the place that she sees that everything is very strange around everything everything is very under a very surveillance sort of area that every every time everybody is watching them everybody is noting their every action to uske hisab se zitkala ke jab wo dining area mein jaati hai pehle to usko lagta hi hai ki jab wo ja rahi hai wahan pe school mein ki har time koi na koi unhe dekh raha hai har time unhe aur wo jo bhi kar rahi hai unke actions ko note kar raha hai उनके जो भी हरकतें कर रहे हैं वो लोग कोई ना कोई हमेशा सर्वेलेंस कर रहे हैं उनको सुपरवाइज कर रहे हैं उनको देख ही देख रहा है तो कुछ भी गलत करेंगे तो देर माइट बी अ पनिशमेंट एंड शी स्लिंग वेरी आउट ऑफ द प्लेस वो उनको लग नहीं रहा ये मेरी ही जगह है या फिर मुझे यहाँ पढ़ना है तो उसको बहुत अलग लग रहा है उस जगह से शी फील्स व्यर्ड शी फील्स कि ये बहुत स्ट्रेंज है जगह बहुत अजीब है और पता नहीं इस तरीके से क्यों हो रहा है हर जगह क्यों पूरे स्कूल में ऐसा करा जा रहा है सो शी सील्स फील्स वेरी आउट ऑफ द प्लेस शी इज फील्स वेरी अलोन इन दैट इंटायर प्लेस बिकॉज डजेंट फील द एनी थिंग इज फेमिलियर बिकॉज द स्कूल अथॉरिटीज हैव ऑल्सो फेल्ड हेयर टू मेक अ स्टूडेंट मेक अ किड अ स्टूडेंट हु इज कमिंग टू अ बोर्डिंग स्कूल to make him feel familiar with the place or make him make him or her feel very uh, familiar to the place very friendly surroundings are not there so the uh, the person the kid always feels that somebody it's very strange it's unknown it's a different land it's a different uh, unknown land to them because they are not from this place they have come from somewhere else from a different native zone and now they have been put into this sort of cage and she feel very caged actually after when uh, this has been done so what happens then uh, when she is going all around this when she enters <coughs> <coughs> sorry when she enters the dining table when she sees that so many people are like her and they are also not feeling uh they are also feeling uneasy they are not feeling that the place is their its own like her then she also looks at them and she thinks and why we uh, the students why we as kids are being forced to do this which is not us why are we being forced to wear such things that uh, we don't want to wear it's also a form of oppression that somebody doesn't want to wear certain things or, or somebody does not want to do certain things now the higher authorities who are powerful they are being forced they are forced to do certain these sort of things because it's uh, because it was the rule the rule of the land which we say so that happens with her so now when she enters the dining table now the uh, time comes of the bells so now they have to sit and have their 
food they have the meal on these three uh, three set of bells where uh, first bell they need to pull out the chair uh, second uh, bell they need to sit down on the chair and third bell they need to start eating so what happens now is that Kalasa uh, doesn't know about these rules what she does as soon as they stand in a line in a form this, that long table where you see and all the students gather around and take their they stand behind their chair wherever now they're supposed to sit so as soon as the first bell rings uh, she pulls out a chair and sit, sits down and start eating so in the first bell she suddenly sits down and start eating so she doesn't know she thought the first bell is supposed to you should supposed to start eat now when she does this everybody is looking at her everybody is looking at her as well as even the higher authorities the that gra, the gray haired woman is also looking at her in a very strange eyes that she will be punished or she will be beaten up or whatever sort of thing that uh, she also looks in a very stringent manner uh, and everybody looks at her and she feels so humiliated she feels so sorry for herself and humiliated and being uh, pitied over and she's very shy and then she starts crying when she's sitting there because she feels very humiliated by the act what she did so when she feels so when she starts crying now after that after that what happens now this is one episode that that's over now later uh, when this episode happens when it is a, it is sort of a rule which is uh, she has she felt that she has broken and now she might be punished because of that now what happens her friend judwin uh, she knows she knows few words of english so she overheard the headmistress the gray haired woman saying that they will cut zitkala's hair so zitkala's hair is really long and really thick so they are native american uh, people native american pe uh, people who have their cultural identity comes from their long hair especially of women so they have long hair and uh, that holds that they are very strong in their culture and they are very proud of their own hair because it's so implies over that they are victorious and it is not uh, it is their own identity so now what happens that zitkala sa uh, judwin overheards the gray haired woman that they will cut zitkala sa's hair and because she knows few words of english so now she comes and tells uh, zitkala that uh, you know i overheard that i have heard that they will cut your hair and she feels very scared and humiliated and very um, sad about why this is happening because for her her hair was something to be being proud pride of uh, they take their pride over having long hair and uh, her mother said that long hair only people who hair is shrinked or hair is cut down are the people uh, either they are prisoners uh, either they are war prisoners or they are mourners or they are cowards so it means that there is certainly a different sort of cultural imposition being done on the child now she the child is young and she is very scared the, her long hair was being cut now it will be cut so it is also where the chapter name is also a part that her long since cutting off my long hair is the name of chapter it's and where this section comes where her chair her long hair will be now cut down it is a form of cultural imposition it's a form of oppression for the young girl it's a form of uh, sort of um, uh, in in uh, in a farce of discipline it's a form of also being uh, being suppressing one's own identity so when she hears this fact that her hair her long hair will be cut she is very scared now she wants to hide and uh, judwin she asks judwin why judwin says uh, that uh, no point in fighting them back they will be uh, they will cut your hair no point of resisting we have to bow down to their needs so it also has a very stark difference between how judwin behaves because she here is submissive she 
doesn't want to fight the oppressors and here is this Kalasa who will resist, who will fight until and unless she is really tied down and then her hair will be cut. So she really uh, now since she is scared and she will resist this entire episode since as soon as she gets to know her hair will be cut and Judwin tells her that no point in resisting, no point in uh, uh, hiding, they will find you, no point of fighting them back. Since they are oppressors, they will do what they want. And uh, Jitkala says, no, it's my cultural identity, I can't let it go. I mean, this is my long hair, long hair, cutting down long hair is very humiliating. It is not for us, it is for uh, the uh, war prisoners, mourners or cowards. This is not for us, so my mother has not told me. Uh, to cut my hair and it is uh, they have a certain custom that they follow if they cut their hair they will be into the different category altogether we tell our kids i mean uh, certain uh, things we tell our kids which is of our own cultural identity and when that is hampered or that has been targeted specifically then the child feels very lost very humiliated by that fact because it is their identity and it's their own uh, manner they want to continue. I mean, it's their own uh, certain practice that they don't, don't want to let go. It is a part of their identity as well. So she doesn't, she has very long hair and she doesn't want it to cut. Now what happens? When she uh, runs away, she, uh, she runs and gets and hides herself in uh, one of the rooms under the bed and she is now very scared, very scared. So when the authorities that woman, grey haired woman and she comes to cut her hair to find uh, Zitkala, she is not there and everybody is now searching for her. Everybody is all over the school running for her, searching for her, that where is she and her, this sort of, this practice has to be done. Where is she? Now in a dark room where she is hidden, now people come and um, open up the windows and so there is little light in. When there is light, they could see Zitkala hiding. I think and then they pull her out from there and uh, in a very inhumane manner they tie her down in a chair and then uh, cuts her hair so and she's crying she's screaming she doesn't want to do it she's resisting herself but she's forced to cut her hair so that sort of uh, oppression been happened that sort of practice in a very inhumane manner it has been happening and this is also a part in term in the name of discipline, in the name of discipline in the school. Very stupid sort of rules being made, certain rules which were stringent, which being followed, certain rules they just wanted to make, certain rules are made for fun. So so that to oppress these kids, these when we they impose such rules on these kids, then they can have certain sort of fun because uh, I don't think so any long hair of any student should be cut or uh, that's my perspective. Uh, it can be yours as well. So I don't think that there any uh, there should be a rule, uh, there is supposed to be any sort of issue with the rule of long hair to be cut down into short bob cuts. It's not um, part of any sort of academic structure, any sort of discipline structure. That's on even the student which is coming uh, from a very native section of the community, uh, marginalized section of the uh, society. So, and their hair being cut down without understanding the importance of their hair is a very, uh, it's a very uh, oppressive uh, rule, oppressive framework of the entire institution. So, she feels very humiliated, she resists, she feels humiliated, she feels very uh, she cries, she feels very hot, she understands the oppressive, uh, oppressor's evils. I mean what they are trying to impose on kids and this is not the way how kids should have been treated or she should have been treated in the boarding school. She was a kid, she was pulled out and she was tied in a chair it's in a very inhumane manner and then her hair was cut. So this is in a very uh, negative, in a very negative sort of manner this has been done. So uh, when she, it happens she cries, she resists and soon she had to give up because now she's tied down, she's a young kid and there are so many people holding her and then her hair is cut. So this account she gives of 
how her childhood been traumatized with such sort of a boarding school which is Carla Indian boarding school and how she feels very much oppressed by this sort of uh, behavior of the authorities and that's uh, it leaves a lot of trauma within her and she begins to write she begins to write her stories how this oppressive structure uh, in the society by the super superior in quotes uh, the Britishers or whosoever is colonizing them has been so oppressive for the minorities or people who think they are inferiors has been really tra traumatizing and it has also created a lot of divide in the society and also led to a lot of discrimination and suppression of the marginalized sex sections. So fourth, the account is, uh, is given in that manner. So when you uh, remember about the themes, what she's talking about, it's a very critical um, uh, narrative of her own. It's an autobiographical narrative. It's her own memory from the childhood. So remembering all of that, it creating of cultural hegemony of Carla school in uh, towards the students of various communities. So this all has been done. So they are creating uh, cre cultural hegemony in the school irrespective of uh, many students coming from de various different cultural identities. Then loss of cultural identity of a person when there is imposition of a different culture. So suddenly if I am here uh, of a different culture, uh, if per se, if I am Bengali and today I am told that you will not follow the culture of uh, your not follow your own culture, you will not follow your own Bengali culture. Rather, now you will start following a Punjabi culture. So, if uh, they are if they are powerful, if they try to impose it on me, or even vice versa, if I am uh, in majority, if Bengalis are in majority and my uh, uh, Punjabis are not in majority, if I try to impose my culture over them, it's dr drastic for either of the sections because they are losing their own cultural identity. I will be losing if mine is taken away and even if they will be losing if they are being taken away. So this sort of hegemony will be created, this sort of division in the society will be created. So our cultural identity will be lost. We will be forced to sort uh, do certain things that we do not abide by or we do not follow and that is probably we don't know also. So we will be forced and that sort of uh, oppressive attitude is being taken it has been done with Dutkala as well where um, the culture of Native Americans that she used to follow she's a Native American now she is imposed by a British culture British uh, modern in quotes culture where there is dressing which she feels is immodest where her hair is cut where she, uh, the, those table manners being followed which she is unaware of and those uh, which the person is uh, the kid is not even taught not even made acquainted to so that goes by and then uh, how she suffers there is a class di distinction where there is this distinction of who is uh, superior who is inferior in terms of money or in terms of culture so that sort of distinction which has been created then indig uh, indignities that has been suffered by the oppressed section that happens because she uh, is from oppressed section so she feels very much uh, oppressed by the sort of rules that has been imposed over her then she uh, condemns the entire narrative entire story of her childhood memories in a way it, she's condemning the dogma of colonized rule by her giving the account of her own oppression that she has followed she's condemning the entire idea she's condemning the entire structure the school has been following she's condemning the entire way the school has been uh, imposing their cultural identity over the students from various different cultures so she's condemning them then uh, she's very particular about uh, her hair being cut and when the hair is cut she feels there is the loss of cultural identity because there is a different sort of uh, um, pride they carry in their hair uh, because if they cut the hair then it, uh, the, her mother told her the hair is cut of the people who are war prisoners or mourners or cowards now when her hair is cut she also feels like one of them but her hair has been cut without a reason without any sort of uh, her act which is disgraceful but 
Her hair is cut just to say abide by the rules uh, of the stringent rules by the authority to satisfy the needs of the authority. So forth, the, her hair has been cut. Authority being the authority who has the entire boarding school. So that's why her hair has been cut, which is very oppressive for her. Then, then imposing a one culture of the colonizers over the marginalized section, which I have been talking about. Then, uh, okay, when you uh, sort of these uh, various sex things that happen, uh, firstly, when she enters the school, she sees that it's in the biting cold, it's very cold, and students and the kids, small kids, are told to pick up stones from the ground. It's very cold, and she feels that it's oppressive for them. Then, in the table, the table when those three bells happen, and how they're supposed to pull, uh, pull the chair and then sit and then eat in those three bells. But since she doesn't know, she's not acquainted of, then she's uh, taken by this. Taken, uh, then uh, she does a mistake where she feels very humiliated uh, when she sits in the first bell with them and starts eating, and everybody is looking at her. Then the headmistress, the grey haired woman, is looking at her in a very stringent manner. So that happens. Then wearing of immodest clothes and tight shoes, where she, she is aware. She sees also her many of her uh, people from the native, uh, from her section, is wearing the same sort of clothes, and they feel very uneasy. So, so does she. And then her long hair has been cut. There is a wide difference between how Judwin or Zitkala behaves. How Judwin complies. She completely complies to the attitude, to the discrimination, to the oppression done by the colonized authority and she ha she goes down, she becomes submissive and she follows that. But in um, co to contrary to that, now uh, what she for, uh, Zitkala fights back, she fights back and she resists our, uh, over all these things or whatever is happening and then she follows and uh, later her hair is cut anyways but she resists, she also fights, she doesn't want to lose that cultural identity. So that has been there. So let's go on to Bama's story now. One we have finished with Kala's story where we have seen the superiority of the British rule as well as their power of colonizing the marginalized now. Now it comes to the second part of the story, the second narrative, the second story where it says that Bama, who is a Dalit feminist writer, her story from her childhood. So when it's her story, so remember it's also involved. It's a story based in Indian uh, Indian caste system, in the caste system which engulfs our society today. So uh, to just to give you the background, how the caste is divided, how uh, caste is div uh, in terms of how caste system prevails in society. Uh, to just to give a background, just to give an introduction about how caste system is. So uh, what happens in Hindu tradition? Uh, we follow the caste system that, uh, uh, and the caste system was inscribed in Manusmriti by, uh, and the terms of how uh, the caste came, how the people came from Brahma's in the entire body, and uh, so forth. The caste was divided amongst themselves. So from Brahma's mouth, Brahmins came. From his chest. Uh, Kshatriyas came from his belly, uh, Vaishyas came and then from the feet, Shudras came. So Shudras today we uh, largely known as the Dalits. Shudras, they are the most lower caste and the highest caste, the most upper caste is Brahmin caste. So when the Brahmin is when it's the most superior and upper, uh, upper caste in the Hindu tradition, so they were allowed, they were equivalent to the masters of the entire society. So this caste system has been followed in centuries, in past so many centuries it has been followed and there's a lot of revolt around the caste system to stop this caste system because this caste system also leads into divide in the society. And when it leads to divide in the society, it also leads to a lot of exploitation, a lot of discrimination, oppression of the lower caste, the marginalized caste. And one of such cruel, inhumane practices that were happening was the un was untouchability. So, Shudras usually were deprived of most of any opportunities, the only uh, job opportunities or any sort of 
even basic digni dignified life was uh, not given to them so even that was uh, they were deprived of and so they were basically put into work of sweeping or or uh, sweepers all these low work of cleaning these uh, cleaning all the potholes cleaning all uh, the dungeons so these these were their work usually they used to work for all these upper caste basically the brahmin so uh, so untouchability was practiced in a manner that anything even touched by them will not be touched by or will not be uh, anything which is touched by that caste will be polluted and the other upper caste will not touch those things so same sort of account happens in bama's story as well where there is an account of her childhood when she is walking and she experiences that sort of uh, attitude by the upper class and she is unaware of the fact that it's untouchability and this sort of attitude has been followed uh, practice has been followed for so many years now and uh, then she gets very infuriated and then mama <coughs> starts writing she is a dalit feminist uh, writer and uh, she used to uh, it's uh, the autobiography of the work of uh, of bama is karuka and from karuka the uh, the work the story has been taken that we are all we are two human beings and this is why uh, it, the the name itself is very self explanatory where they where this caste divide this caste discrimination and society has for, has also deprived many people from basic human rights from basic human rights their dignity of life has been hampered so they are not even considered to be humans anymore so even today we see so much of exploitation and oppression happens on dalit people all around the country so in daily news you see there is uh, rapid rapes happening of dalit girls there is uh, dalit people beaten up uh, without any reason without any specific reason just by the superior upper caste so and there is no rule set rules uh, that pr uh, protects them so untouchability which was challenged by uh, Uh, by mohandas karamchand gandhi uh, it was challenged by uh, mk gandhi and then it was uh, when it was removed even still it has been followed long by then it was challenged again by ambedkar also b r ambedkar dr uh, bhimrao ambedkar and since then and he is first dalit he is dalit who has written a constitution and uh, this entire practice that was happening of hindu tradition which has hegemony of caste been created that one caste is so powerful over other caste that it has the power to dictate the other caste dictate any caste who is low and uh, suppress them in any manner so there were series in uh, series of events that has been happening there is series of there is a history that i would uh, like to imply on the history of uh, dalit uh, oppression on on the name of caste which has been happening especially with the women and uh, because they are being they are being butchered either ways firstly they are going through the uh, patriarchal system and where they are uh, where we talked about patriarchy in aunt jennifer tiger and here is the patriarchal system that has been followed in the society as well as now the caste divide so the women gets tortured in a double manner so here it's a dual way of torturing the women so these are the subaltern voices this has been challenged uh, by child by various dalit activists and various dalit uh, um, writers they keep on write, they write about it so even uh, bama is one of them she is a dalit feminist writer she used to uh, she worked as a nun for 7 years then she stopped and then she started writing because she wanted to talk about she wanted to challenge this sort of caste system she wanted to challenge this sort of structure uh, that is creating this divide this cre uh, giving authority to one section of society one caste to uh, gain power over the other caste so that sort of hegemony being created in in the society and that sort of divide being created in the society and she wanted to challenge all of that so what happens uh, when she is writing she is narrating her uh, story from her past from her 
childhood that she sees and then she realizes that this sort of practice has been happening uh, in our country and with us from so long and in and then uh, in revolt of this uh, sort of practice the sort of Hindu tradition that creates such a caste divide the centuries have seen rise of other religion eyes of other uh, religion where people of Dalit people have converted into different religion to save themselves from uh, the stringent uh, caste system of Hindu tradition so there was Buddhism that gave a rise ever uh, in fourth uh, Buddhism that gave rise in early centuries then Buddhism again rose as new uh, neoliberal Buddhism movement uh, during Ambedkar's time and Ambedkar and with Ambedkar 50, uh, 20, uh, more than 20,000 people also converted themselves into uh, Buddhism since all the Dalits that time converted themselves into Buddhist, uh, uh, Buddhist and that has been happening and then people have to get out of this sort of system again they have converted themselves into Christianity and so to get out of that sort of oppressive system they have started taking different religion as they saw so that once they are out of that religion they will not be uh, they will stop that suffering of them will stop that exploitation that suppression in a very inhumane manner will be stopped that practice of untouchability will be stopped so in that manner uh, every uh, people ta time and now have been changing the converting into different religion to get out of this stringent caste uh, divide which is created in society so uh, that's how uh, even Bama writes, Bama writes from her perspective of her childhood, uh, she sees all that. She is in class third, she is around eight to nine years old and uh, now she is, I'll give you a brief summary about that story and then we'll discuss the major points that from both the stories that we have heard. So both the stories in memories of childhood. So um, again, it's also very critical chapter that talks about caste divide, that talks about oppression and it's uh, uh, this is like they have this is their own narratives and they have felt that sort of oppression in the society so they are also they are very critical about this as well so uh, she is now uh, she is in third class she is around eight to nine years old she is coming back from school so she is a very inquisitive very observant child so while coming back she notices everything which is going around her all right so when she's coming back usually from a school to a house it usually takes 10 minutes of a walk to reach but since so much is happening around in the market she is seeing all of that he's seeing all of that and she is uh, coming it takes her coming back from her, uh, back from her school and which is taking like uh, half an hour or one hour because she's stopping and she's seeing everything which I, whatever is going around um, in the market. So while she's coming back, she is happy. She's very cheerful uh, girl, and she's uh, while she's coming back, she sees. All, all these uh, street plays, she sees a man who is chopping onions, she sees the temple which is there, she, stay, uh, she sees all those foods and the sweet stalls, she sees, uh, notices all these uh, public uh, announcements done, all the campaign being done by the politicians, by the political parties. So this story is uh, technically based in Tamil Nadu. So uh, she so forth their um, function, their festival is pongal. So she sees all the pongal uh, preparations being done in the market. She sees uh, monkey, uh, those snake charmers, monkeys play show and street plays and all those things while coming back. She sees, sees many things. She's observing. She's walking on the road. She's stopping. She's seeing everything around her. So it takes her so much time to while coming uh, coming back. So while she is walking again, uh, after crossing all these things, all the exciting things she she sees. So uh, when you read the chapter, you may underline all of you should actually probably uh, you should underline all of these uh, little things she uh, she sees because this can be a question to be asked. So there are many things that she sees, and uh, you could mark them presumably. 
so uh, while she's coming back she sees so many things and she also sees now uh, the next episode which is going to happen where she actually inquires and sees uh, untouchability on the face so uh, while all of these has passed this marketplace has passed one day she sees that a landlord is sitting and uh, on the uh, landlord is sitting and then a old man comes uh, carries varais which is uh, which is sort of vada uh, which we say in hindi here so it's sort of uh, that carries those varais uh, varais in a very uh, beard manner according to her he carries there's a polythene it's it's kept there and he carries it with a string so and it's a very old man and he he is uh, he couches and he is bent and then he carries it to the landlord what happens he is walking in a manner and in a manner that uh, she uh, bama feels it's very funny she uh, he is walking in a very laughable weird manner so she sees that she is feels it's very funny how she he is walking the old man and he goes and hands it over to uh, to the landlord now when she hands it over to the landlord landlord eats all the varais uh, and uh, he doesn't even share she notices that she's a 8 9 year old girl so that idea of sharing and compassion and gratitude is there since she she's also learning this in the school as well as at home so she gives it to uh, and he eats it all the landlord finished the entire varais and then uh without even sharing to the uh, to the old man and she steals it, she sees it and she feels very weird about it that she didn't even share so now she has seen that episode and now she comes back to her home now at her home thambi which is his el which is her elder brother he is a university student so and he is a well educated university student he studies he goes to the library even when he is at holidays uh, bama describes that he is so studious that he goes to the library and he sits there and he studies all of things so when she goes back home she is a young and then she tells his brother about this incident that uh, how the landlord yeah, the old man brought this thing to the landlord and he was acting in a very strange manner and he gave this vadais and he hold it with a string and then he didn't even share the the entire episode she tells to thambi so and uh, in um, in the chapter anand vardasus anand is usually we refer as brother so in tamil anand is brother so and uh, the brother's name is thambi so th- he tells it to thambi and um, then thambi actually didn't. so now bama is very young bama thinks how the way old man was walking is very funny is very uh, humorous and funny and she laughs and uh, when she's telling she's also laughing so um, so, so then thambi uh, replies that it's nothing humorous and laughable about it is not uh, something to be enjoyed this is uh, and he explains that this is the practice of untouchability being followed now he tells her about how the upper caste is been behaving with the lower caste and how uh, we come in the lower caste we come as dalit we come as lower caste and we are untouchables for them so anything which is touched by us or that old man is polluted so it is polluted by us and we they cannot use it because we have polluted it so and he talks about how uh, all the errands of upper caste is in is been run by the lower caste people which is dalits and and how they are being exploited by over and over years and so uh, bama questions that how can it's so weird how can anything be touched which is have been polluted by us so because the idea of polluting uh, which we learn in science is very different uh, in the younger ages and we don't realize that sort of identity uh, uh, idea in when we come into uh, we see a different connotations of polluting polluting certain things when we get aware of the terminologies as well as when uh, how bama in her earlier classes so getting polluted is 
in a very science man in a very science terminological manner which is being she, which is she using and she's uh, asking how can we touching it pollutes anything of uh, food because we also eat we uh, we also eat we don't pollute our own food also so if we touch the food how how are we polluting and she feels very irritated and infuriated by this sort of attitude that what is wrong we are also human beings and why such uh, uh, practices being done with us so she asks uh, she asks about these things and then anand uh, thambi tells bama that there's incident that happened with me that i once i was coming back uh, home and then suddenly a old man comes and ask me where do you live and when i asked, and when he asked me where do i live because he wanted to uh, recognize identify my caste since wherever i live that is caste or uh, sort of caste uh, oriented area so he wanted to understand he wanted to identify my caste that's why he asked me where do i live so by uh, where we live so if it's a highly dominated caste area uh, Dal dalit area so if he lives there so he will be able to understand that he's a dalit so in the same manner uh, thambi tells his experience that that happened while he was coming back and somebody asked him that man asked him what is his caste uh, what is where does he live so that he can identify his caste and then uh, sort of do whatever uh, he wanted to be done by thambi because because since he was from a lower caste he will have to do the work uh, given by the upper caste so that that incident when he tells bama and and bama feels very sad and hurt and infuriated she is very uh, angry about whatever is happening that uh, this is a caste divide in the society and we in a, at a very young age she feels that she understands the entire vicious circle of caste she understands how the division the in the society goes on and how they are being uh, oppressed by that sort of a system and then oh and then well he tells uh, well thambi narrates his entire story then uh, he asks then uh, bama he also then as a brother because he loves his sister he advises bama that the only way they can change the um, system or maybe challenge it or uh, gain more respect in the society dignified uh, dignity and have a dignified living in the society only if we educate ourselves and we uh, get good marks and we educate ourselves more so that people uh, people respect us that we earn laurels and we, people respect us they will if they respect us they will also understand they will have to treat us in an equal manner so the inequality will be uh, then can be debunked entirely so they have to all so because with education only we can debunk the entire society's caste system which has been created and that uh, makes an imprint on bama's mind and this advice of his elder brother after, after that bama studies very hard and she stands first in every of her class uh, every of her exam every class she uh, proceeds front so forth and when she is uh, Uh, she is so studious and she is so intelligent girl because she stands first in every class she is well educated so everybody has to she compels everybody eventually has to become her friend and respect her and give her that respect because she is well educated and she is intelligent so she feels that only education can per se um, change the entire scenario of the caste system and this uh, uh she can debunk the entire idea of caste divide through education the inequality which is done amongst the caste can be stopped because of this and she feels that this so bama uh, from her younger age becomes very much aware of this system becomes very much aware of the caste divide as well as the oppression that has been done on the name of caste and um, the evils and you know in your main behavior that is done on the name of caste with uh, on the name of caste and caste divide by the upper class to the lower class which is dalits which she belongs to and she realizes that and then she becomes very critical about it also she becomes critical about it she studies hard 
so and she feel that only education could revolutionize the entire uh, system and create a movement because uh, education is the only way that can make people aware about this they can challenge the history they can change their future so and they can honor dignified living so that's how uh, she proceeds uh, herself so uh, so here we are discussing two stories that show that sort of showed our superiority and inferiority uh, in the society created by a powerful upper caste upper caste upper slash upper class section and uh, done to the marginalized lower section and how that those powerful can dictate the marginalized making in it in a very regimental role making in regimental role like in zitka lhasa story and uh, and making it very inhumane and discriminatory and oppressive role in um, bama's uh, bama's narrative both has a very st stark realities uh, on the face of society that the cl class and caste divide and the um, that the uh, the powerful is has always um, dictated over the uh, the poor the lower caste or the marginalized so that so that they gain more power over the other and that oppressive regime has al always been followed by people and uh, and they can be only challenged by education and voicing out their opinions and uh, educating other as well making um, spreading awareness so forth they both have written their narrative so memories of childhood are the narratives of their own childhood where they have written all these stories where they have written all these narratives of their own childhood and they have uh, talked about how these oppressive uh, stringent attitude being challenged by uh, both of them so uh, to go over bama's theme so what so when you answer them so what really happens that uh, in be to our human beings bama is a dalit feminist writer all right and uh, then she talks about her uh, stories entirely very critical about the entire caste system and what she experiences so uh, caste divide where she uh, which is leading to untouchability uh, basically experience of her experience of a third class which she um, gains and how the narrative follows so uh, untouchability done to dalit specifically uh, then author she hadn't ever heard about this word untouchability or this caste system because she was too young to even know about this and when she sees this then uh, his brother his uh, her brother had to tell her about the entire stringent system of the caste so author hadn't heard about untouchability at all uh, but she feels humiliated for what it is because she is a part of that caste and she feels very humiliated by that then uh, she watched all the fun while coming back she is watching all the fun she is watching all the uh, all the activities which is happening very curious about all these activities which is happening so she is watching all of that then she uh, tells then the episode between the uh, landlord and the old man happened where she sees the first time that untouchability is been uh, practiced in the country in that entire uh, episode she comes and tells to um, her brother thambi and brother explains her that this is the caste divide and this is untouchability which we followed and we belong to the same caste then the author is very infuriated about um, about uh, untouchability and the um, and the practices the inhuman practices done towards her caste and she feels that how uh, those vadais could have been polluted by the old man if i mean what is the practice untouchability why has been practiced anyways that she follows uh, she asks questions about that uh, to his brother then uh, her brother explains that uh, the low caste have always done errands for the upper caste because there's a caste divide so there is inequality in the society and uh, everybody so there is uh, somebody superior somebody is inferior and since they are also a part of lower caste so they have done this all while 
so she, and she is very infuriated about it she is very angry about it then uh, then the brother narrates his uh, his experience about how uh, once he was coming back from the uh, coming back to the house and a man stopped him and asked him where does he live to identify his caste so that uh, he can be tortured or oppressed or whatever um, so he wanted to identify the caste so since if they identify if he's from a lower caste then anything could have happened so he talks about this he uh, bama is infuriated she's very angry about it then uh, brother the elder brother brother also gives her advice about what should be followed and how should be followed um, this entire system then she should follow education she should practice education she should uh, educate herself uh, well she should uh, be f uh, uh, study well so that she comes first in a class and she owns laurels so she can own uh, respect in the society she can uh, earn a dignified living so forth if she earns a dignified living everybody has to uh, respect her and with only education the situation can be changed so education becomes here the st uh, their tool to revolutionize the entire thing uh, to stop any sort of inequality being happening because if they get if they study well and they are well educated the people will be compelled to respect them are compelled to give them the same status as uh, the upper caste has so they will be on equal level so that comes to be the entire uh, story of bama and uh, earlier we discussed that kala so then we will, now we will do a difference between both of their stories i mean uh, this difference in similarities of both of these stories and we'll discuss the questions certain question how to approach them so since we have discussed both of the narratives of both of the authors now bama and zatkala sir and both of the narratives is very critical about the social structure of the entire society where one is being uh, tortured because of the class and cultural hegemony of the colonizers uh, uh, and one is being tortured because of the caste divide in the country all right so bama and zitkala both share both both of these stories are very similar in terms of it is both uh, a uh, memories of their childhood as well as it is both uh, talks about the how the marginal sections in the in the society have faced oppression from the uh, from the powerful from the powerful section the upper caste the colonizers how they have faced the, uh, faced all sorts of oppression and suppression from them so uh, if the question comes in terms of how will you compare or give the similarity or compare both of the uh, childhood narratives or both of the uh, authors bama and zitkala remember you should uh, give a little bit introduction about bama and zitkala in your own um, sort of words where you write that zitkala is a native american uh, writer and she talks of, she basically talks about uh, how her people her people in the community how native americans have gone through this imposition of the culture by the britishers in and her uh, are her narrative over how the british school this uh, the carla uh, carla school actually uh, makes a regimental framework of their uh, of their uh, discipline the disciplinary rules and how uh, every time there is surveillance over them how that rules are made to uh, make fun of the students either to uh, on the name of discipline to just oppress them uh, or just to uh, just to get into that rigid framework and impose their cultural identity over the other so you have to give a little bit account of zitkala Uh, uh, first and then to bama how bama is a dalit feminist writer and she basically has uh, this her narrative is taken from uh, karuka uh, uh, karuka and uh, her autobiographical narrative where she has discussed about the caste system and she has faced uh, faced issues because of that caste system 
how she has faced all sort of oppression because of that caste system and uh, you will have to talk about uh, you will talk about a little bit about Bama in that zone and then if it's compare uh, compare both of the stories of oppression talk about how uh, when it comes to Zitkala Sa mention there's a class divide mention there's a cultural hegemony being created by the upper uh, upper class right now that time it was colonized the britishers their uh, cultural hegemony being created then the regimental rule uh, in the school which is done by uh, which is the which is actually which is formulated by the britishers talk about that talk about her uh, what she goes through when she comes into the school how, how she goes through all sort of inhumane practices done by the school authorities, how the small students uh, in chilling winters they are told to pe uh, pick up stones from the ground and then the eating by formula that entire section where um, on the three belts they are, they are allowed to sit and eat. On the first well, they need to pull their chair, and the second well, there will be prayers. Prayers will be done, and then in the third, they have to start eating. So, how Bama forgets, uh, Bama doesn't know, uh, sorry, that Kalasa doesn't know about it, and she is not acquainted to those rules. And then, she, when she does this, when she uh, mistakenly uh, in the first where she sits, sits on the chair, she feels very humiliated because everybody starts looking at her. She feels very humiliated and feels very um, out of the place and she starts crying. She feels very shy about it. And then how uh, the, dress, the dress code which has been created by the school in terms of uniform is very stringent according to her because how um, the, the dress that is worn by uh, the school authorities, which is imposed by the school authorities over the students, over the kids, she feels it to be immodest and how she's not, she's very shy and since she has never worn that sort of uh, tight or short clothes and very stiff shoes, now she's suddenly made to wear all of that. So she feels very, uh, she feels that those clothing is immodest according to her culture. So she has to wear all of that. Then th again, then there is a, um, then there is an account how she, uh, how Judwin tells her that her hair, her long hair will be cut. And soon after she hears that her hair was actually cut in a very inhumane manner. So all it's a brief, very brief account which I'm giving you. So talk about all of that. Then when you come to Bama, talk about the caste divide that Bama is talking about. Talk about she's very critical about the entire caste system. She's in, uh, very critical about the inhumane practice of untouchability which has been done that she has seen in her in her childhood. Uh, the entire episode about the landlord and the old man, how the landlord practices. Uh, untouchability and she questions how can a food be polluted by that sort of uh, by ho by a man uh, 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 a man from a low caste touching it how is polluted and how it is not unfit for uh, for eating of the upper caste how can it is not how it is not uh, the entire she tries to debunk the entire uh, idea of uh, untouchability which is completely false so uh, she questions that, then she talks about how it is inequality in the society and how the entire, this framework, this entire structure of uh, inequal, uh, inequality amongst the caste, then inhumane practices done, inhumane practices done on, uh, in, on the name of untouchability on the lower caste and there is exploitation, there is uh, discrimination in terms of opportunities, in terms of uh, suppression of uh, those castes and then uh, they have been devoid of basic dignified life. So all of these talk about all of these. Then uh, she, at the end she feels that only education is a solution since how his elder brother Thambi uh, replies to uh, gives an advice to um, Bama and says that only education if you study well, if you win a lot of laurels, if you stand first in the class, this is, you will be compelling every other people to treat you equally in an equal status and um, they will respect you, they will befriend you uh, if you do that. So people will not look at your caste then probably. So education, she feels education is the solution of the entire, pro entire 
uh, problem, education is the solution to the, in, uh, the way the entire caste system could be challenged. So, when you compare, uh, when you comment, uh, critically comment on their situation and compare them, talk about this, talk about the basic similarity that has been followed, which is, uh, which is a kind of when they both are talking about oppression, they both are talking about depression, uh, uh, discrimination, they both are talking about cultural he hegemony being created. It's also in Bama where uh, there is social evils in the society are uh, being forced on certain section and uh, that uh, section is marginalized and then isolate, isolated in a manner and then the powerful, uh, the superior, the upper caste or upper class is actually oppressing the lower caste, the lower class or the marginalized, uh, marginalized community. So uh, you can give a stark, uh, stark comparison between both of them, you can also on a basic general level you can talk about the similarities of both the, both the authors and their narratives of their childhood. Then uh, if there is a question about how both of them react to the situation, so in Zitkala she resists, where Judwin fails to resist, the fails, she is a submissive, she gives up the entire in front of the system and she uh, advises Zitkala to do the same. But Zitkala on the other hand uh, takes, uh, she resists, she fights back, she doesn't want her long hair to be cut because that long hair is her pride pride of the, uh, how her mother has told her. So the short hair is only for cowards, mourners or war prisoners. So she, uh, she resists, she resists the uh, regimental rule and that inhumane practice which has been done by the uh, grey haired woman or the authority in courts. So the, and how then Bama reacts to it, Bama goes, Bama sees that entire episode between the landlord and the old man, she goes home. She talks about, she narrates the entire tale about this to his bra, to her brother and how Thambi uh, tells her, tells her about the entire caste system and the caste divide which has been created and he, he tells her about the, the practice of untouchability and she is infuriated because of that and she feels that there is so much inequality in the society because of that and how uh, we as uh, lower caste or uh, people, why should we be liable to do the work of upper caste and why should we run errands for them since we pollute, since according to them that uh, they pollute, so uh, pollu uh, that we pollute their food and we are not allowed to touch them. Uh, they are not allowed to touch us, anything we touch they are not allowed to use, they will not use or it's not edible for them. So the basic, both of the, uh, both of the chapters, both of the narratives, they are in a way questioning, in a way they are uh, talking about equality, dignified life, that each and every should, one should be respected and giving, give, given equal status and each, uh, each community, each, even, if it's much, uh, even if it's in a very minimal, minuscule level, each of them should be treated in equal sort of respect in the society and uh, they should be, uh, their culture should be respected, their practices should be respected and there shouldn't be any sort of imposition of a different culture over them or there shouldn't be any divide or discrimination on the na name of class or caste. So that has been done. Then and there is a question about uh, what does Anand's advise Bama to change their situation. So talk about how the education is important for people, how education makes people aware about the situation, how they, it can challenge the regimental rule, it can challenge the evils in the society. So how education is, uh, is a tool that can change uh, the living conditions of the marginalized section and how Anand, uh, Anand uh, so since he is already a university student and he is a student, how he has advised Bama to change the entire, to take education as a tool and um, do well in her, ex uh, in her studies and then uh, challenge the entire system of, uh, entire caste system and divide. So talk about all of these things and talk and remember to mention the name of the author when you attend the answers so that uh, and the name of the chapter memories of childhood how it implies how those memories of childhood has been uh, a trauma for both of the authors and how they narrate their own autobiographical uh, narratives 
which from their work how they have left an imprint on them so talk about all of these things and talk about both of them were young when this was done so have left an impact over their minds so all of uh, talk about all of these situ uh, all of these situations all right and that's that's it and then then you will be able to answer the 